This is the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G. Disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Once the SIM tray is removed, we need to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run it along the edges to pop off the catches. Once the back housing is free from the frame, it can be lifted up from the right side to the left, but be careful since the flex cable for the fingerprint reader is still attached to the main board. The metal bracket or cover needs to be removed. That flew pretty far, I'll just grab that later. And then the cable can be disconnected. The back housing is made of plastic. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. On the other side, there's a small layer of graphite, which helps transfer heat. At this point, there are 14 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the top plastic cover can be removed. The NFC antenna lines are drawn over the center of the plastic cover, as well as numerous other antenna lines, which are just light gray color lines. On the other side, there's a layer of graphite film, which helps transfer heat. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we're gonna disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. Here's a better look at the 5 megapixel front facing camera. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw holding on the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On top, there's a 2 megapixel depth camera, followed by the 50 megapixel main camera and the 2 megapixel macro camera. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The LED flash is located here, and there's a secondary microphone on top. There are also rubber gaskets around the connectors. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back, and there's graphite tape and a thermal pad on the back shield. Once the graphite tape is peeled back, there is more thermal paste on the processor. Here's a better look at the MediaTek Dimensity 700 5G processor. Now the bottom plastic cover can be removed. There are more antenna lines on this plastic cover, and there are rubber gaskets on the other side covering the speaker assembly, charger port, and headphone jack. If you needed to replace your screen, you would have to remove the SIM tray and the back housing, as well as the top and bottom cover, and then you would disconnect the flex cable for the screen from the main board. You would also have to disconnect the flex cable from the subboard, which is attached to the flex cable for the screen, which connects the subboard to the main board. At that point, you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You would pry your old screen off, apply a new adhesive and reapply your new screen, making sure you run the flex cable for the screen and the flex cable for the subboard back to the openings in the mid frame, and you would reassemble your phone. Moving on, the flex cable for the subboard needs to be disconnected, as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the subboard that needs to be removed. Now we can remove the subboard. Here's the charger port, the primary microphone, and the headphone jack. Here's a look at the other side. On the other side of the subboard, on the frame, there's more rubber gaskets. On the other side of the headphone jack, charger port, and speaker assembly. The speaker itself is held down with adhesive, so if you need to replace that, you can just heat it up and pry it off. There's also a liquid damage indicator, which is this white sticker. And there's one more by the SIM reader. To remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off, so we're gonna have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 milliamp hour battery. The flex cable for the volume keys is located here and it's held on with adhesive, so if you need to replace that, you can just gently pry it off. The top earpiece speaker as well as the vibrator motor are both held on with adhesive as well, and you could remove those by heating them up and prying them off. This phone has an aluminum mid frame which is covered in plastic, 
So the silver parts are aluminum. And the black parts are plastic. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 7 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.